Love it or hate it, 3 is big right now. It's here to stay, and we're going to show you how to get the most out of it. Know the differences to yes. help you save money. We're going to show you what the best kind of content is to watch and what is the best way to view it. Today on Two Smart Guys. 3D movies. All right, all right so, so yeah. what's the difference? What's the difference? Okay, so not all 3D movies are the same. Just because they say 3D at the end of it because it's the third in the series does not make it a... I mean, it's shot in 3D. Well, and there is, there's two different kinds of 3D that you see even on Blu-rays, which is really the part that gets deceptive. If it's not a Blu-ray, you're probably looking into your multicolored glasses, okay? So that's not real 3D. That's um, in the same way that we're, your 3D TVs and things like that are talking about. So if it's just a standard def DVD, not going to be the same kind of thing. If it is Blu-ray, it has to be the Blu-ray 3D, which is completely deceptive. Yeah, so there's the, the actual Blu-ray 3D, like this. Which is this. And you see, you see right on the top, Blu-ray 3D, right up here. Yeah. And then there's 3D, which is like the DVD 3D. Well, you notice the Blu-ray logo is exactly the same, but it says comes with 3D glasses. That usually is the warning sign saying this was not the same kind of 3D that you know your 3D TV was made for, or your 3D Blu-ray player, or you know your expensive toys aren't going to work the same way as this. Yeah. So that's that's buying them. Yeah, that's buying them. That's buying them. Now, in order to qualify as a real and there's a big, you know, like, real 3D movie. It has to be shot with at least two cameras at the same time. Right. So this is, this is a movie shot in 3D. Yeah. So that would be something like uh, this movie right here. Avatar. Uh, like, a, yeah, like the big movie Avatar. Avatar. That movie was Resident shot in Evil, 3D. Tron. Um, uh, yeah, Tron. Movies that are 3D and act, or that are made in the computer. And Caroline, like, let's not be, let's not or, be yeah, like CGI movies. Let's not know, be let's not be cartoons. at all rude. Caroline was absolutely shot in 3D. It's just it doesn't put out in DVD Blu-ray or the Blu-ray 3D at first. They put out the the Blu-ray in just normal what we had considered normal 3D for a long time. Right. So you want. So if you're going to see a movie, do your research, go see the 3D movie that's shot in 3D. If it's a post-production 3D, which is something like some of the aspects of Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans. Uh, the Airbender. Last Airbender. And the Green Hornet Piranha. Piranha 3D. <laughs> um, what's going to happen is they took that movie and tried to pull things out. They need to recreate the whole movie for your other eye. Yeah. So they had to go through, trace around every things. frame, and shift it. And generate the background. <laughs> Some do better jobs than others. The and Green Hornet, not nah, yeah. so bad. Yeah, the Last Airbender, effect, terrible. The, the biggest factor in how a movie is post-processed is how much green screen work there is, or how much digital or planning. Work. Uh, Absolutely. Because Alice in Wonderland made a ton of money. <laughs> well, it made a ton of money, but it didn't look that bad. No one complained about it because but, they knew there it was going to be a three D movie from the very beginning, so they planned it. And they shot, even though it was only one camera, they knew that they were going to do it in 3D. And most of the backgrounds were virtual, so they were actually rendered in well, 2K in 3D. I think that Ragwell has a good point, because when you have a dispelling of belief when you're in the alternate universe, of, you know, and you're shooting everything on green screen, you can get away with a lot of stuff because you have to dispel reality to even watch the movie. It's if true. you're watching something like Your Last Airbender or Clash of the Titans, when you're going for more of a... I, I, I hate to say this, realistic approach to like the environments where well, you're trying not to green screen as much. You know, you may have CGI characters, but you're not green screening as much. You can't pull as much separation when you're doing the post process. That's true. So, yeah, so when you want to go to movies, look and see if they shot it with Cartoons cameras. look fantastic in 3D because they have the ability it, with the yeah, CGI to do it right cameras. away. So that's why you could, you, in realistic, could have the first Toy Story come back out in 3D if they wanted it to. It did. They released it in October. They, and they did a back-to-back. -back. They did Toy Story 1 and 2 yeah. in the theaters. And it will look fine and it looked in good. those movies because they <laughs> are created in a 3D environment and you're only seeing what's put in front of you. It takes nothing for them to repro... Okay, nothing in the world of... But they just add another camera, re, you know, reprocess their frames, and they've got 3D. Yeah. So, so. post-process on that works, but it doesn't work so well in live action. Right, and and people have to be smart about when shooting 3D with real cameras. They need to know uh, about interocular distance, like the separation of the cameras in your eyeballs, um, because otherwise it'll give you a headache when you watch it. So they can there can be movies that are shot with 
two cameras that look really bad. They, they yeah, strain they, your eyes, they hurt your head. There's a, there's a lot of people doing a lot of really complicated math. Yeah. And it really is scene by scene how much depth you want to see, where the perception is, and like the, the discussion about how to calculate real word interocular distance for the scene is my naked lady doesn't spend that way. Or something like cinematography is all of a sudden it's got this math involved. No, it's people not even that. Even, it's people even talking about doing a third camera just to throw just it for to, good measure to I, help later on in finding which I is the best one. I honestly think the people who are adding a third camera are the people who are not willing to pay that mathematician to sit there and go, all right, we need to have this 37 millimeters part. No, it's it's really confusing and the distance has a huge, huge thing to do with how you perceive the movie itself and how they shoot it. So, yeah. um, so don't go see the new Harry Potter in 3D. It's post-processed crap. Yeah, well, and it's, <laughs> you know, you, you can usually and find out about which these. Parts they post-process too. Yeah, if you're in a, you know, if you're in a different world, like I honestly say that this movie was shot correctly, but any movie that's using it just as a gimmick is, you're not going to sell many movies, and that's actually going to kill the 3D. This one used it as once they got into alternate universe where you know we're talking about that's when you start seeing 3D and you start and it really works you know it's it's done well it's done nice and you know I don't know I I thought it, it looked really nice to the movie. it was productive to the movie so so that's what you need to look for when you go out to watch so a this movie. is now if you can imagine this much into watching a movie Imagine, or just making the movie, imagine how many different ways there are to watch the movie. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's tons of ways of watching movies, and uh, there's tons of ways of... Say, so, do you know what else you can going watch? Going to meetings. <laughs> I'll say, you can watch, you can have your meeting on your screen. Yes. Just kind of, very similar to what we're doing here. Hey, right, we can have a meeting. Yeah. Uh, right now, you can get a discount on um, the GoToMeeting service. Yeah, you get a full uh, month free trial. Use, so, use the code podcast. Check them out. It's good stuff. Use go, it. Go to meetings.com. Okay, so let's talk about the different ways. Like we originally started out with your TVs, and we could have yeah, so 3D with different <laughs> yeah, so you've kinds got, of colors. Yeah, you your traditional um, and types of. 3D. This kind of made me sick. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I can put it in so, now, and this so would be kind of fun to go to the bar this. with. <laughs> But that's about it. So all the, all of these glasses and all of these TVs, I mean, it just boils down to one simple concept: getting a separate image to each of your eyes. Yes, the whole concept is has not changed since the 1800s, where they had two images, and this viewer you had to stick up to your face and you saw everything in 3D. It's the same concept. It's just how they execute that concept is the very, very, very complicated thing. <laughs> And so, for people that want to get into like 3D for their, you know, video games or watching 3D movies, what are the options available? Okay. What? Well, well, I think we can, can say there's three different ways. There are two of them are with glasses. Right. One of them are without. That's okay. Correct. So we'll talk about the without glasses. Okay, the thing so that everyone wants to have is without so glasses. Without glasses, the cheapest way to do this, which most people don't even realize. If you remember back in the 90s, there were those posters you stare at and they'd become 3D? Yeah, those were always kind of confusing. <laughs> They're basically defocusing your eyes outward. Actually, the other way is something that we all are very, very used to, which is these, you know, covers that are, like, they're zippy yeah, on the yeah, front. Like, the, like on this And you top. rotate them. You rotate them and they kind of they kind of shift and you can't see 3D without. But yeah, you can kind of see the image shift a little bit. That honestly is how the 3DS works, and yep. the TVs that I've seen that don't work, use glasses have a screen that looks very, very similar to this because they have to bend the light and take one image and bend it so that two eyes see two separate things. Yeah, so th this method isn't very good because you have to be focused directly on it. It, it works decent for the 3DS. Uh, Ragbo actually was pretty pleasantly surprised. <laughs> well, yeah, it works, you but... Know, it, it, it takes a while to get used to it, and it's, you kind of have to lock in your head almost to a certain position, but as soon as you figure that out, I don't know, I was able to play face readers and you know, moving about. And I think that we would all agree that the, the idea of both the 3DS and possibly even the 3D TV without glasses is probably not a group experience. No. It's, no. It's, right now, it's a singular experience. 
You have to be dead Definitely. center on. You have to, you know, really have the right, correct lighting in the room for the TVs. And the same thing really for the 3DS. You can't really be in super bright light because the the angles on the screen refract light differently and you end up yeah, having problems. I can't problems. imagine taking that thing outside. Have you tried to take it outside yet, Pox? I haven't yet. I haven't. That's a good thing to try. <laughs> okay, so the reality of having 3D without glasses right now is pretty far off. There's yeah. a lot of crazy and I ways. I think it only works for certain people. Like, the, you know, some people had troubles with the Magic Posters. I think a yeah. lot of people have trouble with the 3DS. YouTube is awesome because if you go to YouTube and watch videos in 3D, you can pick which method you're viewing them with. I don't think it's fair to say YouTube is awesome. Then why? Because we're on it. <laughs> anyway, one of their options is they give us money. One of their options is is cross-eyed. They they just throw up the two images. You cross your eyes and you get a middle image and it's in 3D. Works great as long if you as can do it. You can do it without getting a huge headache. Yeah, but I, there's no color loss. There's no flicker. It's fantastic. We do not recommend <laughs> crossing your eyes for any period of time because, as my mother said, they'll stick that way. <laughs> So those are those are your, your um, glassless options, um, which I don't see going very far right now. No, that's, that's, those so are, the only product that you can buy right now that is glassless is just the 3DS. Really, or, in reality, it's a 3DS. There's a couple of tablets and phones that are gonna be out soon that'll do it, but they don't look very promising. It's, it's <laughs> the same gimmick, just abused. Let's be honest. Oh um, God. <laughs> so then we go into um, viewing. Your tele with glasses, and there glasses. are and the, via t uh, TVs or theaters. There are two ways: um, active and passive. And all active means versus passive is active has electronics inside of it that are manipulating the image in front of you. Passive are you know pretty much a piece of glass, which that filters light. That just filters light in a specific method. So you can think of active as like. Blinking left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Active right, takes left, a battery. Right. Let's just be honest. Active <laughs> takes a battery. If, you, if it's going to take a battery, it's going to be active. Um, so with the active glasses, I think you need to explain these. These, okay, so they're, they're the ones that are a little chunky. They've got, um, if you can see on the edge here, they get a little thick right here. The and there's batteries. actually a battery inside there. And they sync to your television um, system. Yeah, so there's an infrared signal coming out of your television, going into a transmitter in the middle here, and it synchronizes at 240 hertz per second with different frames per second that it's So your TV has to be flickering. 240 hertz for active glasses? Yes. 240 hertz. And they're specialty hertz. TVs. You're they're not going to be able to buy this TV they're giving you, and make this work. Yeah, they're 120 hertz per eye is what they're giving you. <laughs> and then within that 120 hertz per eye... <laughs> The movies are only shot at 24, so they're they're not 24, it's 24 frames. 24 frames per second. So hertz and frames aren't the same, but they're pretty much. Hertz is a cycling. Oh, well, off topic. Anyways, <laughs> they're they're flickering as fast as humanly possible, so it doesn't give you an ice train, and you don't see the flicker, but essentially it is doing that. I mean, well, it's so flickering. it's taking that. 200 year old idea of having two images and it's forcing you to close this eye and have this eye open and so close this eye and open this eye and because of the speed at which it moves you are supposed to, supposedly imperceivable on the shift which is what your brain fills in the holes and translates into 3D. So the disadvantages of this are the glasses are expensive. They Very were, expensive. Up until a week ago they were $150, $200 piece. Up until yeah. a week ago. Now they're 50 bucks. Well, there's a secret to that, <laughs> and we'll tell you. Uh, the other thing is, you can't really move around a lot. Um, if you're a shifter back and forth, you can actually start seeing flutter. Yeah, if there's, if there's uh, so anything that's in interrupting the IR signal, like with the Wii Remote, uh, halogen lights do it, they can mess up the sync and you'll see flickering. And that'll give you a headache fast. And if you're sensitive at all to fluorescent lighting or... Um, you know seizures if there if you know things like that that can you know be with some people they're not recommended um you can, if you're someone who gets headaches or has problems with that you're going to have problems like, with these um and the other thing too is that the sync setup or the sync system that's all proprietary for each tv yeah, brand so. you, for the most part you have to stay with your brand yeah you you got to buy the samsungs for the year 2010 or the 2011 cuz they aren't compatible with each other yeah, <laughs> and you can't Honestly, buy the Sony ones. This is a simple. Panasonic ones. They're all different. Here's my editorializing. 
that will be the simple reason why that doesn't last. Although there is another company that makes one pair of glasses, they're about 80 bucks, which they're going to have to lower the price now, that can sync with all of them. And I tried them, they work pretty good. So and the, there's a box though that comes with those that kind of goes in between, isn't there? No. Or no. No, it's just glasses. It's just glasses. Because the glasses. TV itself has everything. The third way. Oh, but well, with Sony's, <clears throat> Sony's they have a transmitter they put on top of the TV. Oh, okay. An IR transmitter, but the other t everybody else has it built into the TV. Okay. So this third way I call the probably the most likely su to succeed in the free market, just because of the cheapness of the glasses and the inexpensiveness of the televisions that can use it. Right now, Vizio's putting out a lot of these TVs. Um, the same glasses that you see are the Real D, 3D. Um, yeah, so these are passive glasses. You know. So th There's no electronics. You can see they're, they just look like a couple of, you know, I call them Clark, Clint, Clark Kent. Um, and what they are is there's a polarizing lens in between. Yeah, and they're just polarizing the light in di different ways on for each eye. So, so they, it's, it's a different yeah. degree so can, for each eye. So they, in the theaters, they'll either do two projectors or a wheel that goes Somehow every other frame. Them. Anyways, they, they project two different images at two different polarizations, and then they put on your eye to filter out each type so of So instead of telling your eye left, right, left, right, on, off, on, off, what they do is they just physically remove the light that would come off of that to that eye by doing it's this. It's like the... The updated version of the red and blue anaglyph. It is absolutely the updated version of the red and blue anaglyph without ever having to worry about, you know, I would say there's a good percentage that 99% of the people can actually see this without too many problems. Right. There, there are, uh, well, let's talk about cheapness. Cheapness. So they can make them cardboard for like literally oh, pennies or will. less than a penny. I think they'll make them very, very cheap. <laughs> and that was the big selling point was in, to convince people that they were better than anaglyphs is that they weren't going to be cheap, cheap. cardboard. Yeah, they, they were, were going to be nice, nice glasses. glasses. Which these, they make you pay, what, three bucks more per movie to yeah. watch these? Yeah, and they probably cost them like 10 cents. Don't, by the way, just <laughs> I'm going to tell you this right now and I'll remind, tell you why later. Don't throw these away. Yeah. When you get done with the theater, don't throw these away. Don't give them back. Take them, put them in your pocket, and keep them. If they have to say the real D, don't try and keep their active shutters because they'll hunt you down and kill you. So what do they sell these for for TVs? 15 bucks? Um, well, Vizio was trying to sell them for, I think, around 10 bucks a piece for what they consider oh, premium. Screw that. Premium. I love that word. Because I was actually, you know, you know, trying to clean them off, and they're the same crappy plastic. Those now, Oakley these. makes pairs for about 80 bucks. <laughs> yeah, you can buy some very, very nice. I, I really wanted, I went to the Red booth. They, they make... Oh, probably made by Oakley, and they had like real nice ones, and they were giving to everybody. But they like, we're gonna kill you if you didn't give them back. Yeah, they, <laughs> they wouldn't let you leave without giving them back. Men were gonna <laughs> get you. So, um, this one, what it does is it takes a television that's 120 hertz, and it will take a um, progressive signal and break it into an interlay signal, which means that it, ha it shoots every other line. Okay. Right. So that means that every other line is polarized differently. Which, if you look at it without the glasses, looks kind of blurry. And if you put the glasses on, suddenly you've got 3D because you're blocking out one half of that line per eye. So we get three dimensions so out of that. I forgot to point out the advantage of uh, so active, active shutter then is you, you get, get full it. HD in each eye. So because it is the sharpest <clears throat> image you can get. Because you're seeing, when you, whenever you take the you know a progressive signal and you break it down with interlacing and cut it in half, you're really only seeing half of that per eye. So the current uh, passive TVs, you're giving only half the resolution per eye. They can fix that by doubling the resolution of the TVs, which they might eventually do. Yeah. And in reality, <laughs> the perceived loss is very, very, very small. Um, I can't tell you, I, I'd have to really look at something that was not, I would say, super CGI to start seeing the loss because in a CGI world, since everything is artificial, it's very difficult to tell when um, you've lost resolution. Because sometimes they're actually lower resolution because they don't need to have detail in some of these areas. So that would be the key on these. You know, for the most part, these work the best for people. They're cheaper. Um, you can save some money by not buying them again when you buy your TV. But um, it is a lesser resolution option, technically. So those are, those are, and, and, and that's our, our, I guess, should we give the big reveal? Or should we go into Adobe first? <laughs> What's our big reveal? Oh, uh, oh yeah, so, so there's, so these are Real-D. Real-D 3D. 
And we already kind of gave away the fact that. That's fine. Okay. So keep going. Anyways, uh, then we don't. The ones that we don't have on the table because they will kill you if you leave the theater with them are the re, um, the Adobe Digital the Adobe 3D. Digital 3D. Which, if you've got a theater that has Adobe Digital 3D, go watch it because I don't think it's going to be around very long. <laughs> because those are crazy. They have. What, what, a massive color wheel in there that shifts yeah, they, the light? Yeah, they put another color wheel in front, and it's... Bed, bed, I think they just uh, had to be different, honestly. I think magic. it's... They, they did a completely they have different a patented, method. Uh, they, they patented their technology, and it's very unique, and the optics inside the glass are different, and there's advantages that you don't... that it has over real 3D. Well, and the, the nice thing about the real 3D is if you can wear sunglasses... You can wear real 3D glasses. They're not going to do anything more than a normal pair of sunglasses are going to do to your eyes. Whereas these are actually going to create flicker, and the ones that from Adobe are going to create flicker because they're actually shifting a color in front of your eyes in some fashion. They're moving something in front of you, which makes them an active pair of glasses. Active well, no, glasses. No, 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 no. The passive, glasses are active. Passive. The glasses the are passive. passive. Like, the glasses yeah, are they're passive. They're like red and anaglyph. The color wheels are at the projector. Yeah. Oh, okay. I misunderstood how that worked. I thought it was a color. I thought it was inside of the LCD. <laughs> no, honestly, I thought they were shifting the. I thought they were shifting the hue inside the LCD, and they were calling uh, it a color. No, it's just a special lens, but it's it's a passive lens. That's uh, why they don't want you to leave the theater with them because okay. they're more expensive than these pieces. You know, the plastic ones. Okay, but so they filter passive. out certain light. Yeah, because of they the have certain craziness where they're shifting on the projector. You know, it's the same thing with the polarized one. They, they have a filter that goes polarized, non-polarized, okay. unless they use two that, projectors. I was like, my mind was blowing up trying to figure out how to get these, to, you know, how these worked. Because I was like, so they're kind of like this, but not. Okay, well that makes more sense then. Yeah. So I mean, I can I can actually see it in some of the theaters. One, they're not they're using the two projectors or the single projector with a filter. With a filter flipper. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, you know, it's really you know, when there's no filter flipping. And no, I, I prefer real D. It, it looked good. It, uh, and even in the theater, just because, you know, it's, I feel more comfortable without the, the extra flutter going by. My personal experience, there's still issues on both sets of glasses of loss of light by wearing them. Yeah. They're, well, they're polarized. Like, no matter what, like, LCDs, to see through them, have a, a little bit of a, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of that hue shift when my hand and whatnot, you know, in front of faces. You can see there's a little bit different um, darkness. And this looks like a, a basic pair of, like, your amber driving glasses. And these look like a very, very light pair of polarized driving glasses. You know, you can, they're very, very similar in the light loss um, when they're off. Yeah. These increase when they're on because they actually have to go black and then come back up. These stay about the same. You lose a little bit, but how See, much you I, notice, I think, nice is the movie. For people, if they had to count for that when they put out the 3D version, is they, they just kind of crank up, uh, you know, the brightness or the exposure. There's something before they put out the movie. They do. They they, they do do that with the movies. They yeah. they crank them up because they assume that they're going to be viewed at a darker. Well, like when I watched Dragons, you know, it was pretty dark to begin with non 3D, and then I watched the 3D version, and I couldn't see shit. Well, here's the difference: that polarization is is weird to quantify the light loss because it's only blocking out certain wavelengths of light. Other wavelengths of light have no transmission issues. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So it's it's I, I like it blocks a certain percentage of that overall. But some of it blocks 100%, some of it blocks almost nothing. So it's, it's hard to, you know. In, Crap. If this was, if this was a, something you're going to put on your f film camera, you would adjust for a stop to two stops at the most. So it's not significant. You know, a stop, you know, I would say these run about a stop. You know, it's not, it's not very much at the most. And these are the like three or four times that. Okay. Or at least the people Supposedly. that are pushing these say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I don't buy that on the active. I think they're just trying to average. I it think out. I think they're really taking the bell curve on it and just like taking all the numbers and adding them up. It's not really fair to do because it, it is Austin. Anyways, uh, it's going to be a lot yeah. like like plasma or LCD. I think both of them are going to stick around for a while, and there's going to be people that are fans of either technology. Here's the difference: how much does this TV? Co how much does an active shutter TV cost? Uh, Two thousand dollars starting. It depends on now or okay. later. <laughs> he doesn't want to admit it because he bought one. I bought one for $1,000. You bought one on clearance for $1,000. With the glasses and the player. Okay. <laughs> That's so, why I bought it. <laughs> so you, the average cost for one of these is probably in the neighborhood of $1,500 to $3,000 to get started. Yeah. 
and that doesn't always include the player. The average cost to get into uh, the passive, like the Vizio, I say Vizio brand. They sell, what is that, a 39 inch for 500 bucks? Well, uh, the 47 I think is seven, 800 bucks. Um, it's, it's only about $150, $200 more than your normal television. In terms of affordability, getting into the entrance, it's not something you have to worry about. The other thing I liked about the Vizio TVs is if you put a 3D disc in there, you could actually tell the TV to ignore the 3D and it comes out in 2D. You can do, you can do that also with the... Can you do that with the active yeah, shutter? I didn't the, know you could do it with the active shutter, the active shutter ones. Or if you want, I was you, impressed you can wear regular that. shades on pass. <laughs> and, and All right. So here's the hacks. The uh, hacks are... How do I get 2D? Yeah. When I go to if a 3D you, movie. Like my wife does not like 3D movies, but I always want to see 3D movies. So, so the, what do you do? What do I do? Bring in a pair of polarized glasses for her <laughs> that'll, that'll be fixed in one direction, and it'll let her only see one image. The other way <laughs> is if you get two pairs of these, uh -huh. you get the lens from this side, and the lens, uh, two lenses from the same side, and you swap them so you've got two rights on one pair and two lefts on the other pair, and you have two... Anti 3D glasses. Or you wear an eye patch. <laughs> yeah. Or you wear an eye patch. Or you patch. just stab your eye out. And the glasses. <laughs> you have to still wear the glasses. Yeah. Stab the 3D. <laughs> but in reality, the, the anti 3D glasses are becoming very popular on for people. So when you pay the surcharge for these glasses, you own them. They're your glasses. They say to recycle them. Because they're just going to repackage them and put them back out. Yeah. They're going to run them through something and. Yeah. Whether it be at that theater or someplace else, they're repackaging and putting them back out. Take them home for when you get a 3D TV because they work with the passive TVs. Well, or if you go to a friend's, honestly, if you go to a friend's house who has a TV like this, you do run the risk of ending up with a pair of paper glasses. Why worry about that? Not to mention, they have some cool ones for kids. I didn't even know they had these. These little bitty ones for kids. Yeah. Uh, size comparison. <laughs> you know, they're they're awesome. So you might as well keep them. You might as well use them. To me, it's it's going to save you a ton of money because you know, paying again, ten bucks for something that's exactly the same as you paid for when you saw it in the theater isn't worth it. Keep your glasses. Yeah. So um, while you're friends. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you get enough of these glasses, you can be really entrepreneurial and make anti 3D glasses and sell them at the theater. <laughs> Just stand outside the theater in a trench coat. Say, hey, you don't want to see your movie in 3D? Anti-3D. <laughs> Take it uh, with the inside the theater and, oh, I want to see 3D. Uh, $7, you can have these. Anyways, we talked a lot about disadvantages of all these other technologies, but both of them work great, uh, I think. They, they do. They, they both are very, very nice. And you can, you can sit it's through... It's a personal preference issue. You can sit through a whole two-hour movie and survive it, and it looks pretty decent. Unless you get seizures. Now, these old things, they used to kind of... I want these because they, they, I really do think <laughs> that going to the bar with these on would be a new experience. They used to limit the film to like, you know, like little five or ten minute sequences because those do give you a headache. They will absolutely, they have been giving me a headache. But the world <laughs> seems really, really cool with these on. They're, they're, uh, it's shinier. There's a Raggable, you're in 3D. <laughs> there's a serious loss Can you of, see my um, finger in 3D? I do. It's Color. blurry. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show, man. PG-13 has the bird. Anyways, he's just thrown to the bird the because butt. he has a color deficiency and these don't work for him at all. That's the one thing about <laughs> these that the one thing they want to bypass is when you get into active shutter and into passive with the polarization, more than 90% of the population can actually view them and, and you enjoy them. And you get to see the full color gamut. And it's yeah, you don't have to have hindered. the weird color space. Because you lose a lot of color when you do this. Yeah. That's why I wanted to, was wondering about the Dolby since they're using a color wheel what the color space looks like. I think they're just polarizing for that color. They, they do it a special way so there's not a loss of color. Because you can pull it, like you could, you know, tune it to, I think you can tune a polarization for a certain light frequency. That's all it is, light frequency. It was explained to me before that the way that they're doing it is like a circular pattern that's receptive to each eye so it doesn't have li the limitations of like turning your head sideways and, or being off angle like these ones do. But I don't know for it, sure. It, anyways. Anyways, yeah. this has been a marathon show, as some usual people tend to be. <laughs> and I thank warned you him. For, thank you for viewing my crazy rant on 3D and Dragon. Hey, you know, we're going to have a lot more stuff on 3D because it, until it dies, and Ragable and I have bets on how soon it dies, um, 
it's probably going to be around for a while. And since you know everyone's got new, new technology, and this qualifies as new technology, hacking the three D glasses. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm gonna shoot some stuff in three D and post it on YouTube. God, be warned. We shoot it in two D. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for for viewing the show. We're here every week with some kind of technology news or hey, hack or mod. Go to or iTunes, look up Two Smart Guys, and hit subscribe. That's Somewhere all I'm there's say. a subscribe button. Just hit it. I don't care. Just hit it. And if you're a fan, fan uh, is it like us on Facebook? Is that the tech Love yeah. technology? Love yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Tommy5C. <laughs> At Walking Crow. At Ragable. I've actually Man. had people like me or go to my Twitter thing and Twitter me befriend me or whatever they want to call it on Twitter <laughs> from this show which is yeah. weird follow you they follow, follow you. me it's like wow tired. how long have you been using Twitter <laughs> long enough to know the difference on that one <laughs> <laughs> see you guys next week All right. bye Spare two smart guys production